Howdy High Tides, I'm Jed Hoffman with Beach Film News. Due to this week being a, only a two day week, I'm planning on doing a shorter monologue than usual. Anyway, here it is. Anyway, now that that's over, you're probably tired of hearing about the presidential election. What about our local elections? Daniela Cava was just elected as the new mayor of Miami-Dade County. Here's a piece about that. Right now we have this election night alert just in. Daniela Levine Cava has just declared victory in Miami-Dade a short time ago. This past election day, Danielle Levine Cava became the Miami-Dade mayoral elect, and she'll make history as the first female mayor of Miami-Dade. She began her political career in 2014, serving as commissioner of District 8. She sat on many committees, some including transportation and finance, and infrastructure and capital improvement. During her time on the commission, she made many accomplishments. She restored homes and lives after Hurricane Andrew, did work with special needs kids, and raised funding for many infrastructural projects. She is also a strong advocate for the school system and wants it to function to the best of its ability, as we can see in this interview done by Elizabeth Pierce. I was a producer. I teach film. What are we going to do about that? We got to make sure we get kids what they need to explore their own creativity. Our schools need to be not only teaching for the test, but teaching for a future, a productive, creative future. I'm with you, teacher. Yeah. She announced her mayoral campaign in early 2020 and immediately received strong support from influential Democrats. During the primary, she came second by 1%, but was able to win the actual election with 54% of the vote. A large driving factor and talking point for her election was equality for women, equal pay, and so on. She also advocated for preserving the environment and our water resources. Furthermore, she wants to tackle gun violence within the community. Daniela Levine Cava is ready to get to work in office, and we all believe that she will do a great job. Now that we're almost halfway done with the school year, let's check in on the health of our nation and see how close we are to recovering. Hi, Hey, High Tides. COVID cases are rising again. The United States is the country with the most COVID cases from November 6th to the 21st. The cases in the U.S. have been 2,168,227. Then after the United States comes India with 588,517 cases from this period. After India comes Brazil with 388,983 cases. In the U.S., the states with the most COVID cases from the last two weeks have been Illinois at number one with 167,341 cases, then Texas with 145,643, then comes California with 121,790 cases, and at fourth stands Florida with 86,953 cases. During this week, in between November 15th to the 21st, cases have increased in the U.S., Florida, and Miami-Dade County. Miami-Dade makes up about half of Florida's cases for each day. Deaths in Florida and the U.S. this week have followed a similar trend, as you can see in the graph. However, the U.S. deaths are 20 times more than in Florida. So mask up high tides and stay safe. To quote Socrates, like the sands of our hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Indeed, November is already almost finished. So let's just take a quick peek back on what's happened this November. Hey high tides. We wanted to make this segment of Beach Film News all about November. We are going to cover all important events starting with the presidential election. This year's election started on November 3rd and is technically still going on. However, on the 7th, Democratic candidate Joe Biden passed the 270 electoral vote threshold and was elected president. The people of this nation have spoken. They've delivered us a clear victory. 
A convincing victory. Not only has this election been long, but there have been many controversies surrounding it. The most popular one being that the election included votes that were fraudulent. Whatever your opinion on this may be, we can all agree that this election has been chaotic. Another major event that has happened in November is Veterans Day. Veterans Day is a federal holiday that is for commemorating the soldiers that have fought for and served this country. There were many different ways you could have celebrated Veterans Day. You could have participated in a Veterans Day festivals that are held up to commemorate fallen soldiers, or you could have gone to a veteran service organization and pay respects to them. Even if you did or did not celebrate it, you should still be grateful for their service. Speaking of gratitude, Thanksgiving is coming up. November 26th is the day when we express our gratitude to our family, friends, and anyone or anything you are thankful for. However, this year's Thanksgiving is different from the rest due to the pandemic. Here are a few tips provided by the CDC to celebrate Thanksgiving safely. Make sure to wear a mask, stay six feet apart, and always wash your hands. You can also bring your own dishes and utensils, eat outdoors, limit the number of guests, and use disposable items to decrease the chance of the virus spreading. If you don't want to take any chances, you can always celebrate Thanksgiving virtually. Whichever way you are celebrating this holiday, always make sure to stay safe. One major event also affected by COVID is Black Friday. With so many new consumer products coming out this month like the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and iPhone 12, there are bound to be many people seeking out the deals provided in Black Friday. Usually this would be the day after Thanksgiving. However, because of the pandemic, some things have changed. Most stores are either going to be closed or have very limited space, so it's going to be rather difficult to shop physically this year. There is a silver lining though. All these stores are going to have online deals, meaning you can shop from the comfort of your home without having to worry about the virus. This month has been a crazy one, mainly due to the virus. The cases continue to go up, and as of right now, there are over 200,000 cases in Miami-Dade County. So remember, High Tides, enjoy what November has to offer in a safe way. Now that we've just taken a peek at what's happened this month, let's take a look back at this week in history. Good morning, High Tides. Welcome back to This Week in History. To start off, on November 23rd, 1963, the British science fiction television program Doctor Who from the BBC is shown on TV for the first time. The Doctor, played by William Hartnell, in the first series travels through time and space in the TARDIS. Over 40 years featuring a number of Doctors fighting alien baddies, including Daleks, Doctor Who has gained cult status in Britain and is also the longest running science fiction television show in the world. To follow, on November 24, 2012, the song Gangnam Style by South Korean artist PSY has become YouTube's most viewed video of all time. PSY's music video beat out Justin Bieber's Baby for the top spot. Next, on November 25, 1960, Scottish Parliament met in order to protect the alleged existence of the Loch Ness Monster. It was reported that a group of young Englishmen were planning on dropping homemade bombs into the water in order to send the Loch Ness creature to the surface. This would result in the capture of the beast. To conclude this week's segment, on November 25, 2013, Guinness World Records stated that the Richards family in Canberra, Australia, set the world record for having the most Christmas lights with over 500,000 lights around their home. Well, last piece of this episode is a little wholesome piece about the Thanksgiving food drive. Check it out. All right, so what's all this food? What's, what's going on here? So this is the works of all the amazing students and parents in our community that have donated um, for the Thanksgiving food drive this year. So student government um, agreed that they wanted to do something for our community. All of the food that you see here is donations. Um, that our students, thank you, that our students brought in um, for community service hours and it's so we have a uh, general store so they have meals and those uh, students that are having difficult times at home and may not have food they can have the opportunity to have a good Thanksgiving meal and have food for the rest of that week and it's here for them so it's not going out anywhere um, it's actually staying right here at Miami Beach Senior High and it's for the students here at Miami Beach Senior High. Uh, can students still donate 
Um, the donation period already passed. I never say no if students have more stuff and they want to bring and, um, you know, they have to donate. Thanksgiving's not the only time we're going to need food. So if they have it and if they want to, I'm perfectly fine if they come by and they give it because, again, we'll have more things to do. And if a kid does need something to eat, I, don't, I would never want, to want our students to go hungry over something, especially during these times. It's really difficult. And I want our student body to understand that we are here for them and we're doing everything that we can to support them during this time. And a student who's watching this, who's in that position, how can they receive the... Um, I send out an email to the staff letting them know this is happening and to send me a list of students um, that they have identified. However, if we have students that um, you know may not have disclosed to their, their teachers or their counselors um, and they want to, they can come and they can stop by and I'll have grocery bags and they can basically come on in and go shopping and you know put it in their book bags or take it home with them and um, you know be a part of and get what they need and if we have any MSO students if they send me an email and let me know I will make arrangements to see if I can do a curbside pickup for the things and I'll let them know so again because we do have both parts in the building now. now that this week's episode is about to come to an end it's time for second opinions last week we asked you who is the viewers what should my catchphrase be to find out the answer you're gonna have to stay until the very end but, this week's question is, what's your favorite Thanksgiving side? Mashed potatoes, stuffing, etc. Scan the QR code, or check out the link in the description, to answer that question. Well, it's almost time to answer that question. With Beach Film News, I've been Jed Hoffman. You've been you. Goodbye.